Diana Denmark here, Ra ra ra. We are in the kitchen. You've seen my kitchen before and today we're making cake. Woo Everybody loves cake. And uh, I mentioned a couple of weeks ago that I uh, wanted to try out this cake. It's an Igella Lawson cake um, from her book called uh, Feast. And I, I used to have lots and lots of cookery books. I've decluttered almost all of them because most recipes you can find online these days. But I've kept all my Angela Lawson books. I think I've got about seven or eight of her cookery books because they're just really hoogly to read. Even if you're not cooking the recipe, it's just really cozy, uh, cozy reading to look at. The recipe, here we are, the one that we're doing today is chocolate orange cake. It's a flourless cake and it's one of those cakes that benefits from sitting for a few days. So especially now that we're coming to festive season, depending on when you're watching this video, it's one of those cakes that's really good. You can, you can make up a few days in advance uh, so you're not kind of rushing around at the last minute. Uh, and I, I've already, I started this morning making it, you'll, you'll see me, the, the, the first part is um, cooking some oranges and I did that as soon as I got out of bed this morning and then I went off to get dressed and then continue the cake from there. And you use the whole orange, including the pith, I'm not taking the pith, <laughs> uh, you, you, you include the whole thing and here's, here's the finished article. So anyway, I'll, I'll show you how to make the cake. This one I have uh, cooled it and it's ready to be sliced and I'll show you what it looks at uh, on it inside but anyway let, let me run the video and you can see how to make the cake and I shall see you on the other side. Okay. First stage is to get our oranges cooked. It says either uh, two small or one large. I've got two small and the original recipe says to do it in a wee pan with water and do them for two hours but I found on the internet that you can do them da, 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 in your instant pot so I'm trying that today I've put my trivet and I'm going to do the pot in pot method uh, I'm going to put in a, a cup one cup of boiling water my mum always uses boiling water uh, when she's using her pressure cooker because because then it'll come to pressure faster so let me get the boiling water in there right so boiling water going in and then I've got my two, oh, I've got my, my stainless steel pot. There we are. My two oranges. There we go. And then I'm going to put on the lid. Let me see if I can do this with my other hand. Make sure we are on ceiling. And uh, five minutes, let me see, manual for, oh no, sorry, it was 15 minutes, somebody said on the internet. So 15 minutes, uh, and there we go. So I'll, I'll come back to it. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let it cook for the 15 minutes um, while I go off and do something else. And then I can let it cool down a bit and get on with the next part of the recipe. So there we go. A wee look. Right, I'm coming back to my uh, oranges. I've had a shower. I'm now dressed to shoes and I've actually changed my nail varnish if you're noticing the, the difference in colour. So let me get the lid off. Hold on, let me see if I can do this other hand. Ooh, mmm, gosh, it smells absolutely divine. So, so those are the oranges which have been cooked for 15 minutes on high pressure and I just left them uh, to cool naturally. So the oranges are now cool enough to handle. They're still a wee bit warm, but that, that's fine. And we're, we've got to make sure there aren't any pips in there. We are using the pith and the rind. Yes, I'm not taking the pith. The, the Brits out there will understand that joke. Uh, we, we don't want pips, but we want the rest of the orange. So I'm going to cut them open and just check there's nothing in there. And all the ingredients, here's all the ingredients here, and I'll talk you through them right now. All the ingredients are going to be whizzed up in the mixer. I've already used the mixer for preparing my ground almonds, but I'll, I'll tell you about that in a minute. Anyway, I've checked the oranges. There were no pips there. So I'm going to put all of that in first and get that uh, pulped down. And then I'm going to add in, and, and these will all go in at the same time, six eggs, one heaped teaspoon of baking powder, or bay pulver as we call it in Danish, uh, a half, one, uh, just a half teaspoon 
of baking soda or natron as it's called here. Uh, Nigella says in the recipe you can actually leave those two things out, the bicarbonate of soda and the baking powder if you need to do that for you know any kind of uh, dietary reasons that you have. But of course you will have a much uh, denser cake, it's not, it's not going to rise without the baking powder. But anyway, you, you can do it like that, but she suggests using a larger tin and also cooking it for um, a lesser amount of time. Anyway, so we've got the oranges will go in and then eggs, baking powder, uh, baking powder, baking soda, 250 grams of caster sugar. Now we, we can't uh, generally get caster sugar in Denmark. You can put it in your mixer and whiz it up and make it finer. I, I find normal granulated sugar work, works fine for most recipes so that's what I'm using. And then this is going to give us the substance for the cake. It's ground almonds. Now, I'm a bit of a cheapskate. Uh, ground almonds are really expensive. So whenever I need to use those in a recipe, I just use um, almonds. This is ones I, I eat a handful of these every day. To, they're full of fibre, good to keep you regular. Um, and in, in Danish, they're called uh, mandler. And just on a side note, uh, mandler is also the word for your tonsils. But anyway, we're, we're putting almonds in the cake today, not, not, not tonsils. And what I do is I weigh them out and then just grind them up in my food processor. So that's what I've done there. You can see that looks lovely. And then the last ingredient, which is going to give us the chocolatey part, is uh, cocoa powder. Now, not, not cocoa drink. Uh, you know, that not the stuff that's got all different stuff added to it. You know, uh, cocoa powder that you would use for baking or cacao pulver. And the recipe says 50 grams. And you can see I've written here, I, I measured that out. It's, it actually works out as four heaped tablespoons. So I think I prefer to work uh, that way, especially when I'm working with uh, cocoa powder. Anyway, I'm going to, as I said, I'm going to put the oranges in first get that whizzed up and then everything else will go in. And Nigella says, um, it's okay, you know, you can leave a few bits in it, a few specks of uh, pureed orange. So it doesn't need to be really, really, really uh, pureed, the whole thing. So, so let's get uh, whizzing. Right, I think we are there. So I'm going to get this into a tin. It's very gloopy. Uh, I'm going to get it into a tin and into an oven and I'll give you the cooking instructions. Okay, it's a gas mark for 180 Celsius, which is 360 Fahrenheit. 20 centimetres spring form tin. This is my one, my uh, basic one from Ikea. See, 20 centimetres, which is uh, eight and a half inches. And you're going to bake it, let me see, she says here, uh, check after 45 minutes and you may need to cover it up and, and it is going to sink so don't worry about that. And if you're not using the bicarbonate of soda and the baking powder, she says here to maybe do it in a slightly larger tin and less cooking. So, um, oh, and the other thing is I always, always use baking uh, parchment, um, you know, greaseproof paper when I bake. I, I hate having to grease the tin and I always find that it sticks and this makes clean up so much easier and if you crinkle up the paper before you put it in you can really get it into the edges so you're not losing any of that cake. Okay this is the 45 minute stage and I'm just going to test it with uh, the old good old skewer and it's still coming out a wee bit wet so I'm just going to leave it for the last 15 minutes and I'm going to cover it I think with um, baking parchment so that the top doesn't uh, doesn't get too brown. Right, exactly one hour. Skewer's now coming out clean. Remember, it will depend on your oven what size of form you're using. But I'm going to take this one out and uh, let it cool in in the spring form, and uh, then we'll see how it tastes. So let's see how it's going to slice. Got my plate ready and a cup of coffee. Ooh, it sounds nice. I'm just going to take a small slice to try. Remember, this is the first day after it's been cooled for a couple of hours. Oh, you can see a wee bit of orange in there. Right, bon appétit, and I will give you my opinion in a wee minute. And I thought I would get a second opinion, so I've brought some pieces of the cake down here with me. I'm down here for my skinny dip. You know, we... Uh, 
we swim naked in the sea all year long and I'm going to ask the ladies what they think. So they're on their way and they're going to taste it. Okay, I'm back from a skinny dip with the ladies. Today I was swimming with Lena, Lena, Sue and Kate. Uh, and this was the third, this is the third day that this cake has been around. Uh, this is what's left of it and the ladies agreed with me. I mean, anything tastes good after you've been in the sea when it's like 8 degrees Celsius uh, water and the air was a bit cooler today. Anything tastes good along with a hot cup of tea. But they agree with me that while the taste in this cake is good, you know, the orange and the chocolate comes through, the texture is a, a bit grainy, you know, because it is made with ground almonds. And I, I think, if I'm being honest here, I prefer the taste in the cake that I made. Um, I'll put the link up there, the one with the, the black beans. So that really seems like a chocolate cake and you would not know it was made with black beans. This one is um, a bit too more like a kind of energy bar taste. But anyway, uh, let, let me know if, if you've already tried this cake or if you bake it and see how it is. I, I love another Nigella Lawson recipe from her, how, uh, the Domestic Goddess book. Also a chocolate orange cake, but which uses a jar of um, orange marmalade. And that one I have made time and time again. So, so it takes a bit longer to make than this one. But anyway, uh, I'm, I'm going to eat the last of this for my break this afternoon. And all I've got left to say to you is live long and prosper. May the hygge be with you. Danish hygge, cake hygge. I'll see you very soon. And if you want any more very easy recipes, very easy Danish crafts. I've got a whole playlist up there. Anyway, see you very soon. Okay, bye for now.